So what does work, Frank? As far as protecting fishery? Um, clearly, I think you can point to the red drum, for instance. Um, clearly, regulations can work. Um, I can remember 15 years ago, um, it was rare to catch a red drum in, on the North Carolina coast. Um, now, <laughs> caught two less parrots. Yeah, and part of the Reform Act was the establishment of these fisheries management plans Correct. for the first time. Correct. Th that's a real success story. Um, and I have watched fishermen. I don't you know. You know I haven't kept a red drum because you know you only let you, know, you can keep one, and but I haven't kept one in years. Um, and uh, you know people, and I don't know if it would be you know, deemed a steak fish and all that, but fishermen, at least recreational fishermen, treat them with some reverence. Um, but but uh, the, the point being that uh, you know red drum now is fishing is very good uh, along most of the North Carolina coast. You can, you find the fish in places where you, in my lifetime, you haven't found them before. Um, and that's all due to a well thought out management plan and regulatory scheme that has, that has brought that fish back. Now, I will say, you know, you, you, know, you look at something like Southern Flounder, um, that's a decimated population. Despite years of regulation, years of, of limiting catch sizes, raising, raising size limits, um, and the difference between the two fish is one is a very popular commercial catch and one is not. And so clearly um, the survival of a species um, or the health of a species seems to be clearly tied to its popularity as a seafood on the seafood table. Um, if it's a popular restaurant fish, then it, you know, Guys got to go out and catch it. So um, one thing that saved the red drum is that it's not real. It's not a real popular uh, food fish. Tools like management plans and catch limits and size limits, all that can help. Uh, clearly can, and and the red drum is a perfect example of that.